We're calling the meeting to order. This meeting is being videotaped. Um, should we start with oh, yeah. our guests? We, we, have, we have guests here. Uh, I'd like to introduce and, and uh, public comment. Yeah, okay. Um, so if you all would say hello. Uh, can I start? Sure. Why don't you come and sit at the uh, table? Might as well. Okay. Yeah. Might as well. It is fine right here right behind me. Welcome. I'm Bridget Blackman. They, they worship. We're from the uh, board of the Broadbrook Coalition and the Fitzgerald Lake Conservation. All right. Um, shall we all introduce? Oh, and, and would you like to introduce yourself? Lieutenant Commander Kenneth Richard Pratt, citizen, resident of Salvo House. Welcome. Welcome, Jeff. Should we give a quick introduction of the members here? Yes. Yep. Hi. I'm Judy Kimberly. I'm chair. City Councilor Mary Ann LaMarge, vice chair. Adisa Ward, member. Jean Page, member. Chris Palamas, member. Newport, member. Hannah Boyle, member. Ruth McGrath, secretary. Linda Destin, PDA coordinator. Um, we have minutes here that we're going to pass around so we can take a quick look at for both November and December. Does anybody need the minutes? No. Uh, yes, <laughs> Do you have the minutes for today's meeting as well? We don't have the minutes so on. Okay, okay, this is November. Right, I mean, last so. week. She's going to be here. November 15th. Consider November. Okay, you have them. Jane, you have them. November 15th. Thank you. We have November. I need one more. Oh, thank you. Yes, I am. Thank you. One more agenda. Oh, here's this one's for you. Okay. Yeah. And then this Which one? Has that done? November. Yes. Chris, what date is that one? This one's December. December 13th. Okay. Here's December. I think I didn't know. Thank you. Thank you. I have it. I don't want it. And actually, this is an extra. So, the name is it? No, no. I'm good. The no, no. Did anyone bring their copy of the November? Oh, okay. Fine. I'll bring that to me. Well, while we're waiting for the November, shall we go out of order? and look at the December and approve the December minutes. Oh, wait a second. We should have November. See, this is another copy of the same thing. Sorry, somebody did it. Okay. She's running November now. December. You're missing a November one? She's got it. She's running a copy now. Okay. I bought them. But I don't want to, you know, approve them if we don't know. 
Well, our December <laughs> meeting was a special one, um, which you can see here, it was the, the viewing of Lives Worth Living that we hosted for the community. You've got that. I make a motion. We approve the minutes for December 13, 2016. Second. Second. Okay. Motion approved. Yep. Yeah. 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 Now we're waiting for the November ones, and then we can move on to. Now all of you should have gotten um, both yes. minutes. Did you have a chance to look at them? No, a minute before in the mail about um, oh, a week yes. or two weeks ago. Exactly. So I got that. Um, you probably should have gotten it twice, actually. <laughs> so, Hannah, did you get them in the mail? Ah, uh, no, I didn't. Do you still have my address? I do. I do. Mm -hmm. That's yes. Um, I realized that today that um, I needed to probably uh, remind you um, that I usually do receive the minutes in the mail. If, if you could mail them to me, that would yeah. be good. So you, you should have gotten, so you know what I will do to, so there won't be such conflict. I'll just make sure that everybody has another copy of the minutes. Um, but if, if those people I would have mailed to that have requested, and I would have emailed you the others. So I like when you send them by email too. Okay, okay. So we'll, but we'll, so there won't be any confusion next to everybody who have hard copies of everything. Okay. So much further. You said we don't have because I said that was yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what she's making copies so that we can look at them. I know, I know. Yeah. Has everybody read the November uh, minutes? I, I suggest that we, we table those minutes until we have copy, and also it's been some months since we've met, so if we for the next meeting, everyone have read them, and, and and we will catch up. But we've had a hiatus now of a, a number of months, and I'll, I'll second. Let's move um, on to the agenda. Can we? How do people feel about that? Can we have a vote on that. I don't know who's read them. I did. They came in the mail. You said you got them. Yeah. Gay has them. Mm. Ruth. Oh yeah, I wrote them. Exactly. You ready to vote them? Sure. All right. Yeah. So, do we approve of the November minutes? I make the motion we approve the minutes from Second. the Second. Aye. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes are approved. All right. So, we have Not today like that's what as a guest, David Hirsch from the board member of the Book Coalition that's going to tell us about the work we've been doing there. We begin. Yes. Thanks, uh, Madam Chair, members of the uh, Commission. Uh, thank you for uh, letting us appear today. I'd just like to also, I'm on the, a member of the board of the uh, Broadbrook Coalition. This is Bridget Black, and to my left, who is also a member of the board. We both represent of the city of the county. Um, and, uh, the Broadbrook Coalition manages the Fitzgerald Conservation Area. Uh, which, as you may know, is, is owned, the land is owned by the Northampton Conservation Commission. The Broadbrook Coalition is a group of volunteers that have uh, formed uh, the 30th anniversary we we'll leave next year, 2018, to manage the, uh, the conservation area because the city doesn't have any money in its budget, or sufficient money in its budget for its staff to handle it. Um, and we want to first thank the commission for uh, giving us a letter of support and dating back, and we were talking to Commissioner Labarge about this, the letter of support that was re we, we requested to uh, build a new uh, this grant application to build a, a new bridge and make repairs to the boardwalk and the dock. That dated back to uh, December 2014 or January 2015. And um, the, uh, the, the uh, predecessor, Patty Shaughnessy, was kind enough to uh, have let us appear at the time, and we thank the, uh, we thank the uh, commission for, for 
granting of the, the letter of support, which was instrumental. And if I could just take a minute to go through them, you appreciate the process. We applied, the grant was uh, administered by the, the, the State Department of Conservation and Recreation, and the grant application date was February 1st, 2015. We submitted the grant. We didn't get the formal award until the fall. We were notified informally in September, but until we were told officially that we could proceed, it was probably November. 2015. The work did not occur until last summer in 2016. And in fact, some last minute details were already finished yesterday. And uh, I'll get it. But the, what they did, just to repeat, and I'll, I'll pass this map around, was to uh, uh, there's a, um, a, a parking lot at North Farms Road, which has an accessible uh, part, a handicap accessible parking space. And then there's a, a, two, uh, a uh, paved path which is accessible going from the boardwalk down to, some of you may have been there, down to the lake, which is two tenths of a mile. The boardwalk itself, if you can follow me, is about 325 feet long. And then the extension of the boardwalk is another 100 feet. And that is now, so that in effect you have a nice 1,500 foot walk from the parking lot to the end of the of the board, the New York Boardwalk and Dock, which is all accessible and conforms to ADA standards. And um, we also had a grant, by the way, um, from the, the City uh, Community Preservation Committee, and we thank them and appreciate that. And those grants, plus some money that Broadbrook Coalition put up, uh, enabled all the work to get done, uh, the bulk of which was done last summer and fall. And I'll pass this map around to give you an idea of uh, the, the lake and the parking lot is on the, uh, right where the, under your left thumb is, is the North Park Road. Bridget, do you have anything to add? Just like we also had the, um, for the work itself last summer, using grant funds, we paid a very nominal stipend to the uh, uh, Student Conservation Association and their Corps volunteers that are, you know, from all over the country, but you know, we met them. They're, we had our group, and they, they are housed in um, the Holly State Forest, and we do different projects in different parts of the state. So they were here with us for um, five working days. They camped at the Stroh Lake, and, uh, and they were here with us. They lived on the site, and, um, and they did a lot of work on the bridge, some of the work on the boardwalk, because the boardwalk had to be raised, so if you would go there, know that there had been some sinkage of the of the boardwalk and that had to be raised. So that was done um, by our contractor, which is a nonprofit books uh, con construction works. And um, and so but it is there are bumpers on the boardwalk which is in the handicap scene. Uh, path from the parking lot is a paved in macadam um, and then the, when you reach the the turn you can go out to the boardwalk at 350 now, very beautiful view. And also, that we had a bridge, the Broadbrook comes right in there, the bridge was deteriorated, so when that was, that was another huge part of the project, and, um, and that is up to him. Got a railing, all that's okay. So you can go over that, too. Oh. If I can recall also, um, the Commission on Disabilities, when we sent that letter of approval, we were highly involved, I was as a city councilor with Wayne Fyden in the planning department in doing an AGA self-evaluation report in recreation and also um, what we're going through right now on a five-year plan. And I think it's got one more year and then we start a new one again. And when I got the email from Linda I notified Wayne Fyden because I already knew that we were on a five-year plan and they are very willing, the planning department, to step in and help us out. And Wayne had sent me to my council clerk of what the planning would like to be involved in, in the areas, again, uh, for people with disabilities. And it's really wonderful to see us expanding the way they are. And even with the Community Preservation Act and the money that you got, also through the CPA, 
came to city council and we approved that. And you're moving forward, and there's a whole history with that, which you know. And it's thank goodness that we had a business person on Damon Road who donated that land to the city so we could go ahead and do what we have to do. It's just amazing. Yeah, the, the number, thank you, uh, Councilor LaVarge. The number of people, as, as my colleague Bridget pointed out, we're, we're just kind of glossing over the cooperation we've got from everybody. The Student Conservation Corps, the, the Conservation Commission made many site visits. By the way, even though the letter is, the, the application was made, a uh, formal grant application was submitted on February 1st, 2015, the plan for this pre took another two and a half years back, so we were working on that back in 2012 and 2013. The Conservation Commission made several site visits. We had talked about moving the boardwalk, and then they decided we were better off staying in the existing footprint because we can't disturb anything in the weapon. So there's, and the city, the city uh, department, department of planning and the planning director, Wayne Biden, have been terrific. And, um, we appreciate it. One small thing, by the way, the uh, the handicap accessible parking sign, parking space, was knocked down a couple of years ago. And we notified Sarah Lavallee, who is the, who works for the, who is a staff person on the Conservation Commission that had been knocked down. And could she please inform the Department of Public Works to replace it? Well, a year later, it finally got replaced. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> And they put it in the wrong place. It did go back where it was. There is actually a paved spot right where the parking space, the rest of it were the accessible parking spaces. And uh, these, the rest of the lot is gravel. So, and you know, you all know full well that the administrative, you deal with this all the time, Captain General Marshall, all the administrative hurdles, people notified, and so forth. It's, right. it's a lot of work. Uh, just one more, I just want to reiterate that the, the entire 1,500 foot here walk is uh, the McAdam path and the and the, the, the rebuilt and raised boardwalk and the new dock, they're all accessible, built to ADA standards. So it's all accessible and we invite the commission and anyone to please visit the facilities and as I mentioned before, the uh, the Broadbrook Coalition, is, we sent out an invitation, I believe, a few weeks ago to, um, to Linda. And so everyone's invited on Sunday at 3 p.m. It's on North Farms Road. I think the number is about 99 North Farms Road. You'll see the parking lot uh, there. So please come and we're serving snacks. And, and that's this Sunday? Yes, Sunday at 3 p.m. Uh, and while I, before I forget, I, and I mentioned this, there's, there's two other uh, accessible trails uh, in the area that I thought I would mention to you. The first is the uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in Hadley has a very nice uh, accessible trail which is 1.1 mile long and the address is 69 Moody Bridge Road in Hadley. It's right off of Bay Road <coughs> and that's a wonderful place. That was built about three years ago and I, I visit there frequently and they take very good care of it and that's a site too you would be able to use to visit third site in East Hampton that the Pastronic Conservation Trust has built. And I believe they got an award from the organization that you're affiliated with. The Stabo Center? What, what town is it in? What town, what town is it in? The East Hampton. East and I, I will email Linda yeah. the well, information. We certainly look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Okay, great. We'll hope that the projection is not for rain. <laughs> well, okay. there is a rain but day. Would, a would love day. really Three looking, days the looking forward, looking forward to seeing. You. There's a rain date on it. The rain date is the following Sunday, and we have a Facebook page. Correct. So that morning, the decision will be made by that morning. If you look on the Facebook page, if you go to the yeah, Facebook heavy page. heavy or rain is obvious. Wonderful, is obviously, in the cancel the um, the you know we. We also wanted to raise the possibility, and this is the Broadbrook Coalition Board has not taken official policy, but if there's anything we can do to help facilitate a visit to Fitzgerald Lake Conservation Area, Linda, you had mentioned you had a couple of bands. And so if you wanted to set up something where some of your members, you know, some of the group that you're affiliated with would want to visit, we can have 
uh, you know, people take them around and have a little walk on the area. It's a 1,500 foot walk one yeah. way, which I thought is, is, uh, is pretty comfortable. There's one hump where the tree roots have kind of raised the paved path several inches. But um, yeah. you can't stop nature. But the, uh, so if we could do something on that, we'd like to pursue that with you. Okay, we would love to do that. And for my did you have anything to add? I, I would personally thank, uh, thank you for your, for your personally, you know, I'm not going to speak for the, if the, this is the chairperson can speak for the, the group, but um, it's, it's incredible, the volunteer work and, and your creative use of AmeriCorps volunteers, that's, that's crucial. I mean, I've worked for um, the Corporation for National Community Service for like 18 years, and not that many people use AmeriCorps in the right way, and this is definitely the right way. Mm. So congratulations for your time and effort. Good work. Thank you very much Thank for you. this Thank presentation. You. It's very exciting. This is the largest and the oldest of the conservation areas in the city. Some people, I'm sure you know, Council of the Park. This is the land of the Fitzgerald family. Of course, Dr. Fitzgerald was on the council for many years. The Fitzgerald family and the city reached an agreement regarding the core piece, which I think was a couple, 300 acres to begin with, but with the work of, of the uh, Barbara, this is 850 acres now. So this is the largest, and it does uh, the whole, the nor our northern rim of the city, or northwest rim, really northern end of the city, it goes from the North Farms Road, if you're familiar with the area, to the, Col to the Coles Meadow Road. So, and that's just before Route 5. So this has been just sort of inch by inch and in row by row. You know, and we didn't need to leave out, you mentioned, and I was just there last weekend, that the city has achieved access and disability access to the Connecticut River at the property behind River Run mm -hmm. uh, through the Cooperation of Private Landowners. And yes. I just saw that. A bunch of it is underwater right now because this is the highest time for the river, but that, yeah, that's there. This would not have happened if it wasn't for that business owner donating that property. You know, it just never would have happened. But also, too, I mean, you should explain about your organization. You do come to city council periodically where you have to clean out the bog area and you need volunteers, which is a hard job. There's no question about it. And we do go ahead and approve that money for it to be done because it's absolutely necessary. And maybe you can explain why that has to be done, where the danger part is of that. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Well, we, um, you know, we, there we have a stewardship and a preservation committee, and we, uh, we address the conservation issues of the land, which includes the presence of the Desos. We've also had a lot of beaver activity that you've heard about in other parts of the city, which was handled with the beavers going on to have grandchildren you know, without. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, there are certain issues of the, um, you know, the dam, which is an artificial dam, came through the inspection of the state, and they inspected all their dams about, I think it was about 2003, so. And the, the size of the property now relates to, besides you mentioning a private a donation from a private landowner, relates to generosity of families and descendants of people who were holding land who, who did not take the city to town, you know, they, you know, wanted to, they, they received funds, but they, they, they accepted the conservation role. So there's had to be a lot of generosity of the neighbors to have this grow in the way that it has, but for, it's a very big piece of open land that's an achievement for the city. And that means there's a lot of wildlife there, and we have a program of walks and talks, which you can find on the website, which we advertise in the newspaper, and they almost all originate for, from the parking lot on North Farms Road. So many uh, uh, people with disabilities could participate in at least the initial phase of almost all those. And there are various natural history topics like butterflies, and mushrooms, and birds, and different things like that, beavers. Wildflowers. Wildflowers. Well, I'm really looking forward to visiting, and I will bring my camera. Do <laughs> <laughs> you have any extra flyers? Um, no, but I'm going to come tomorrow uh, to the center, and I'll just uh, I'm going to leave them with whoever is appropriate here because we have a poster to advertise the event, and we also have.
you know, both, yeah, the area has a brochure. Can I make a suggestion? We have City Council this Thursday night. If you could come to City Council in open public session, you have three minutes. You should bring that poster. It is put on with the videoing that we do. Okay, and you can talk about what's happening on Sunday. All the members of the City Council and the Mayor were we sent it. invitations. Uh, they were but this is for the public. Yeah. The but visibility is there. Yeah. Uh, and the reporters. And the reporters, right, right. Um, and the uh, members of the Community Preservation right. Committee and the Conservation Commission were sent uh, a group email copies of the invitation. The problem, as you know, is we don't get so much heat done today with the Well, thank you for all your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I know we, we have two more things on the agenda, both the review of our bylaws and also the ADA grant initiative for municipalities. Um, I, I move that we talk about that initiative first before we do our, our bylaws because it's Second. timely and pressing question. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Second. Uh, yes. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Uh, I'm going to let um, Chris talk about this. Uh, yes, we found out uh, not very long ago that the Massachusetts Office on Disability has issued a, um, a notice of a grant opportunity uh, for ADA compliance either planning or potentially for some communities for a small capital grant. Um, it's a rather confused initial um, notification that they put out. Um, it's a small allocation. We believe that it's about a million dollars for the entire state. How much? About a million dollars for the entire state, so very small. Um, they have described both the possibility of communities that have reached certain thresholds already in ADA compliance planning to apply either for a certain amount of capital funds at a million dollars that would be up to 250k they described that obviously would not go very far but also the possibility of some planning grants <clears throat> planning seems to make more sense here um, so we're hoping to get some clarification from the Massachusetts Office on Disability, since it seemed in alignment with what we had discussed doing this coming year, which is to really look at the self-evaluation process <clears throat> and the transition plan for the city. Judy and, and, and Linda reviewed, they went through a big stack of files and found a document entitled ADA Compliance Plan for the City of Northampton, uh, dated January 1995. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at this, um, there are some elements in here that are, that are useful, but I don't consider this a legally sufficient ADA Compliance Plan um, by any means. So this is exactly the, uh, the kind of thing that we did want to look at, which was to uh, establish what we have in place um, and move forward. This 1995 document, for example, does not document a great number of areas of progress that could be registered um, since then, you know, in, including the uh, advancements in open spaces, but also work that still needs to be done. So at uh, this point, the mayor's office, I believe, is <coughs> looking into some information. Linda, is that true from the? Yes. From the Mass Office yes. on Disability. They are having an informational meeting um, late in the month, but that's in Boston, which is a great investment of time to go to the, the top of, um, of Beacon Hill. Um, we hope that they could provide us information more directly than that. 
This is, I believe, the first time the Office on Disability has initiated a grant program, and it, it really shows that. Their, their RFP is not clear. We have a, a lot of questions, but um, if it's an opportunity to solicit um, some funds to support uh, a review and, and moving ahead on ADA compliance planning, that, that is what would be useful to us. I think our line to them would be it makes more sense probably for most communities at this point to be planning rather than to looking at doing some small capital project. Makes sense. And we're in hopes that um, there'll be additional funding the following year and we'll be in total compliance and hopefully that will give us a step in to um, receiving some significant grants for our projects. Yeah, they, the Office on Disability should be saluted for establishing the relationship with the administration to get some funding. Um, also, a related notice that the director of the Mass Office on, on Disability is going to be um, at Eastworks on Tuesday, May 9th from 11 to 2 p.m. And this is, um, I think the invitation is by the, the well, they're inviting local commissions on, on disability. So That's rather than, than the long drive into Boston to um, ask questions uh, there, this might be an, an opportunity What's on it? May 9th. May 9th? From uh, 11 to 2, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Oh, at Eastworks to meet with uh, David uh, D'Arcangelo, who's the director of the Massachusetts Office on Disability. But we will try to get information so that this picture is much clearer before then. And if it is, they, they did say they have to encumber their, their monies. Uh, so basically make a decision about uh, what funding and execute any contracts um, by the last day of June. But they seem to be encouraging uh, some speed in preparing and moving towards a submission for this. Any, any comments? On, yes, sir. Have we reached new business yet? I have an urgent matter. A while ago, I was assaulted in the uh, lobby of Salvo by a non-resident in a drunken rage. I have the police report. He is presently cohabitating with a person, I believe, who is bedridden. That's why I'm here. Um, I have brought this matter to the head of the Northampton Housing Authority. This person was not only drunk and disorderly and assaulted me, the case is being continued in the local court. I will be in court May 5th again. I was in court May 13th, not able to speak to the prosecutor. I will continue until this is resolved. I have no power to further investigate if the lady who lives in room 712, please note that I'm not using names, the lady who lives in 712 is allowing this person who assaulted me and maybe abusing her in some kind of way. Indeed, if she is consciously allowing this criminal to live in her room, she could lose her place. Um, if NHA doesn't clear the situation, I will continue to bring this matter before the commission, the city council, whoever I need to bring it up. The, the conditions for elders 
and seniors in Salvo House puts many people at risk. Everything from active drunks to heroin dealers to heroin addicts. Thank you very much. So sorry that you had that experience. I was able to defend myself using my 12 years of martial arts and my three years of Navy training. I was not harmed and I was able to use appropriate force not to harm him. I do have the police report if any of you are interested in this Ellen Warren meeting. But this is currently before the courts? Um, I will be back in court May 3rd or 5th. And I was in court on May 13th. Yes. Not able to speak to the prosecutor. April 13th? Did you also go to the housing committee and, and let them know about what's happening? I now? have a private meeting with me and my advocates with the director okay. of the Northampton Housing Authority. And I will be writing and documenting. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for doing that, because that's just not right. I agree. You're welcome. Uh, we have uh, one more item on our agenda to look at our bylaws. <laughs> we have, if everyone needs copies, we have copies. I have plenty of copies. I will have to run out again. So. Could I borrow one? Oh, thank you. I'm trying to remember the Disabled People's Protection Commission. I haven't seen it on there. There's also a commission that's specifically concerned. Have we all had a chance to look these over? In the city? Yes. Yes. It's for the state. Okay, for us. Oh, I'm sorry. On the Commission on Disability Bylaws, Ken wants to come through. at the top of each page of the current bylaws, it states Town of Northampton, and it should read City of Northampton. Oh, okay. Yes. Ken, there is also a disabled Also, our, bar, our bylaws do not need marital review or approval. The commission votes for an amendment in contact with contents them. of the bylaws. Thank you. Must not be in conflict with the city ordinances or state regulations slash laws. Or U.S. Constitution. Commission votes for amendment and contents of bylaws must not be in conflict with city ordinances or state regulations slash laws. And I think we go to membership. I'm just jumping on what I looked at. Section one on the composition. I'd like to add language to that, <coughs> which would be um, the Cities American with Disabilities Act, ADA coordinator shall be the liaison to the commission as a non-voting member. The ADA coordinator should keep the commission updated on ADA issues and concerns in the city and provide updates on new rules regulations and laws pertaining to the ADA. The ADA coordinator will keep current and ADA 
with ongoing attendance at trainings, workshops, and meetings. So Linda, we got a new one coming up in May. Mm -hmm. I think then there was an article for section one. Um, and it should be added on and posted on the bulletin board outside the city clerk's office. Okay, what it says on it right now is and posted on the bulletin board outside the <coughs> town clerk's office. Mm -hmm. We need to change that language to change to city clerk's office. Mm -hmm. I thought we could accept that for that one. Yeah, we everything's so out in the bulletin. Let's get to the All your postings, everything. And then on section two, add this and change special meetings to section three. Members shall notify the ADA coordinator when unable to attend a scheduled meeting or commission event. A member will be recorded as excused when ADA is notified and the recorded as absent if ADA coordinator is not notified. And Ruth, I think you can verify that where we have difficulties with that with people not calling in and then we end up with no form. I called in. And that's really crucial that this be done. I mean, every committee in the city, you have to call in. Mm -hmm. Section three special meetings was formerly section two, may be called by the chairperson in consultation with the vice chairperson. officers section two duties add this to notify the mayor when commission vacancies occur and to set the agenda for meetings in conjunction with the vice chairperson the chairperson and vice chairperson shall routinely consult and work in Houston to determine the work of the commission I almost couldn't pronounce that word. And secretary, uh, it should be um, take out to notify the mayor when commission vacancies occur. The ADA usually does that. When we did this way back, I mean, we did it one and a half an hour. Yeah. Can you give me a copy of that so I can change this? Uh, we do we need to discuss these changes? I think we need to have those in writing and consider yes. them because yeah. that's a I have some other changes to the uh, sure, I guess mostly just typos in. But could could we get overall what what you want to accomplish is one defining um, the the role of the ADA coordinator in relation to the commission as staffing, which is not in here currently. So what what are these key points? Uh, clarifying this notification in terms of participation in, in meetings, which has been a problem. And, and what else are we accomplishing here, Marianne? What did you have with? I, did, I figured I'd just get a copy of what you've got. I didn't okay, but what do you, you wanted some changes Oh, he wants to, to know what else you've got. That's but, it. Yeah, I mean, functionally what? I don't, I don't remember all of it. You have to get a copy over there. I know part of what, she, what Marianne had was to give the ADA coordinator more, um, define more what she's doing. Also, she had... Um, I'm sorry, would you say that more clearly? She wanted to define clearly what the ADA coordinator's duties are. Um, she took part of what we had mistakenly put in the secretary's duties, which would go over to... See. What we need to do is get a draft with all the proposed changes, have them marked, and you know highlight. But we haven't we haven't proposed these yet, though. We all need to be able to look at them and decide exactly. what changes. And then, put them down. 
Yeah. All those purple exchanges you've got, I've got, everybody yeah. else has got. Right. And then give everybody a copy of that so they can look at that and, you know. That's a very good idea. Know, so I, I could put that together. My changes are just little things like in the mid bylaws, we talk about where to go to volunteer. To be honest, commission, that website is dead. It's been replaced by another, so it's a typo. We have the wrong clause for the Massachusetts. We said it was 46, and it's really 40, or the other way around. Yeah, we said it was 46. Section 8J, chapter 46, it's just 40. Mine are mostly administrative changes. Uh -huh. And then I caught some that Mary Ann had also. So. Has anyone, does anyone else have any proposed changes to our bylaws? Okay, I've got, I've got, I've got um, how about the Northampton one? When on the top it said about the it's supposed to be community on disabilities. Remember on the on the top it we have commission? Okay. I'm Ruth. Because I gave her some papers here. Um, also I had down um, officers election. Section one, officers of the commission consist of a chairperson, vice chairperson, and secretary to be elected for a term of one year. Section two, the duties. The chairperson, the duties of the chairperson shall be to set the agenda for meetings, to preside at the meetings, to appoint subcommittees, and to represent the commission in an official capacity when necessary. Vice chairperson, in the absence of the chairperson, the vice chair presides at the meetings and represents the commission. Um, the secretary, the duties of the secretary shall be to assure that meeting notices and agendas are distributed to members to report to the commission when a member has missed more than three unexcused absences during the year, um, to notify the mayor when the commission vacancies occur, and to officially record the minutes at regular and special meetings of the commission. Um, the last amendment, these bylaws may be amended at any time by a two-thirds majority of the members, but the amendments must be in conformance with the commission's establishing article in section 8J of chapter 46 of the Massachusetts General Laws. And that's what you said is chapter 40. It's actually chapter 40. Yeah. I have a dear friend who wants to see it. One other thing I changed up under the secretary's duties, I work with the Massachusetts Office of Disabilities um, updating things like, for example, when we have election of officers, I have to go to them, um, correct all the officers, and then I change them on their website. I do that every year. I've been doing that for nine years. There's a few other little things um, that you know they'll send me, and like I said, they sent me Jeff did from the office um, about the meeting at Eastworks, and I told him I've already accepted. He called me. Jeff called me last week. And I told them I would present it at the meeting, and if anybody else wanted to come, I would let them know. So, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just having trouble hearing. Oh, that is sorry. about. I don't know. I'm sorry, this is what you said. Secretary? The Secretary. Secretary's duties. I, yep. work, I do work with the Massachusetts Office on Disabilities. Yeah. Uh, I update them every year when we have elections so they can update the website. Um, there's a couple other little things. There's a form I have to fill out every year for them, just a you know administrative type stuff. Good. And Thanks. I got the letter in the mail about the meeting at Eastworks. Jeff called me. Jeff, that's running it, last week um, said I told him that I would bring it up at the meeting, and if anybody wanted to go, I would let him know. Make sure they were registered. Yeah. So he sent it by email. Yeah, and, yeah. and snail mail. And, and snail mail. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Seems you could, you, you could forward that email to all of us. I didn't get an email. I got a snail mail, which I said I would bring up at the meeting. Yeah. Um, but I guess other people got it already, so it's yeah. kind of a new point. <laughs> but if anybody hasn't responded that wants me to let him know, I can. I want to go. So I, I think what we need to do is, is to have we, all of us have copies of the proposed changes that we can have a chance to look at we exactly. have, and copies of the, and then I, I move that we, we t table this for our next meeting to. I agree. And I, think, I, I second it. I think at our next meeting we should spend some time on this. Yes. I'll, be, I'll put them together an email to everybody. Um, this week or maybe next week, so that um, they'll have them. We can look at them before the meeting. Yeah. Um, 
the proposed changes into a copy and have it marked as draft. Thank you. Yeah, or, or I mean, if we just have, I don't, I wouldn't do them into a copy. I would leave the proposed changes. Right, and Ruth, you have yeah. mine. I know, but I'll, I'll get it. I'll oh. copy it for you because I need one. Okay. And then we can spend some time and we'll make that right. the bulk of our meeting next time to really see what, how we are really going to change the bylaws. Yes. And if we do. Is there any more um, new business? Yes. Do I need them? Yeah, okay. I have one oh, over on our ADA website. Oh, I have it here for anybody oh, yes. to look at. Yes. We are three years out of date on some of these things. Yes. Uh, the last minutes that were put up here were from July of uh, June of 2014. Um, the members are, the officers are way out of kilter. I don't have access to this anymore. I no. can't change it. Right, that. right. So somebody's going to need to, and I don't know how you want to go about this, but somebody needs to update this. I mean. There are members on here that aren't members anymore. There's pictures from 2014. <coughs> That's old. Yeah, well, we have newer pictures. I mean, what is the places. what is the process yeah. of website management at this point in the there city? Is, Can is I what what has occurred here in Linda? Who takes care of the websites here? Every department has somebody taking care of their websites. Chris? mayor has people from each department taking care of the websites. Pat Shaughnessy had, I'm not sure if it was, what's her name? Joanne. Joanne who I handled that. Joanne and I both did. Anyways, Patty had sweet. We have, yes, we have a, a staff person here right. that will take care of websites. However, I think, I'm not sure, you know, if it's an appropriate function. Should we work through the mayor's office? Because they're the ones that are monitoring, you know, the um, the, the various commissions. Right. Um, so let me talk to them. I mean, we yep. we do have a person that's very gifted and um, a social media person that could take this responsibility if it's up to the mayor, um, or it would go through the mayor's office. Mm -hmm. But it is time to update that. It's yes, it is. inappropriate. And the other thing Just in case we have on the bottom of the minutes that will be recorded and it's available. It's not being sent out there. Joanne is holding it up. So, okay. Um, Well, these are important things too. Yep. And also, another problem we had was the visibility of the minutes. They were supposed to have been placed in the library, and they were not. I and I had many of my residents who came here, went into the library. With at that time, you said that the book was in Linda's office now. That's what we're talking about. Okay. I actually got that last week. Yeah. Yep. So it all been updated. We I also come in every month and post the previous month's minutes once they're approved on the voting board out here and the agenda for the next meeting as soon as that's approved. So it is published out here in, in the blog. Chris. Chris? Yeah, um I just want to mention one thing. The concerns with the website are extensive and they go well beyond this. Commission, for example, that the mention of accessibility on the website is specifically about website accessibility. We don't have the, the general information, so I think in the process of moving um, on that process of uh, updating overall ADA compliance issues, there's going to be a significant amount of substance that we are going to want to suggest for revisions to the the website. So clarifying the the process and, and how we can do that uh, is significant. I also think one thing that uh, important to anticipate in the revision of the bylaws is that the ADA coordinator has a relationship to this commission, but the ADA scope of responsibilities is broader than that. So in any description of um, ADA coordinator's role, it's going to have to be clear that the ADA coordinator in some way will also be relating to other departments and other parts yes. of city government and that um, think about how to define that 
coordination and convener role. Mm -hmm. And I understand, Liz, and it's your heart beats a little faster. <laughs> But it's true. But that's precisely the process of thinking, thinking through this update now, and in, in the in the long term, and how multiple departments of the city interact around these responsibilities. It, it, it becomes very difficult because, like with Linda, I she knew not very much about being an ADA coordinator. This is all brand new to her, you know. So. She's and, getting there. And, and it's been terrific that uh, she has embraced it so wonderfully. Yes, exactly. I mean, that all comes with time. So I think I should, if we have no, no new business, uh, I make a motion. We, no more. We, is there anyone? Sorry, yes, I have a couple of things. Yeah. Um, Okay, um, there's, I just received something from the Massachusetts Office of Disability. I don't know if you all received this. Um, but it's basically about a home uh, modification loan program. Um, and if anyone is interested in hearing more about it, um, I can uh, you know, forward, I, I could get some copies of it. Basically, let me, want me to read it real quick? Yes. Just for everybody's benefit. Um, and the Massachusetts Office of Disability will be holding a regional meeting. Whoops, that's the wrong one. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay, I've been doing this all day today. So, okay. Um, home, home modification loan program. We are aware that there are state resources available to help disabled or elderly families or friends remain in their homes. <clears throat> uh, enclosed are brochures to display regarding the Home Modification Loan Program, a program which can greatly benefit elders and individuals with disabilities. While many Commonwealth programs have long waiting lists and lack resources, the Home Modification Program is well funded and seeking applicants. We encourage to share the infor this information um, about this important resource with your community, consumers, and staff. And then it goes on about, um, I'll just read it real quick. Anyway, <clears throat> the Home Modification Loan Program, depending on household income, provides 0% and 3% loans up to $30,000 to homeowners seeking to make accessibility modifications to their homes. Since 1999, these, lo these loans have helped over 2,000 Massachusetts household finance, households finance projects like ac accessory units, home security features, fencing ramps, wheelchair and stair lifts, and then it goes on. Um, zero, the, those eligible for the 0% deferred loan um, may make no money payments or no interest accrues, um, and repayment of the loan occurs when the property is sold or the title is transferred. Additionally, 3% loans are available to landlords with identified tenants um, needing accessible ad adaptations and have buildings with fewer ten, up to the 10 units. Um, for, um, for more information, see the brochure. So, oh, I can also say I use that program. They yeah. do a ton of work. I got a ramp. I got a new kitchen floor. Got rid of the tripping hazards in the kitchen. Uh, they fixed stairs. They put in a handicapped toilet. They did a lot of stuff. 0% interest. They did a window. That's great. Yeah. 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 sits there until. Um, so please, um, I will, I'll get this posted in our chronicles so that everyone can, that a lot of people can, and this would be one of those wonderful things to get on um, on our website, so yeah. maybe we can get something Thank you. there. Thank you. Yeah, I will. Very um, useful. And then, yeah. You know, again, I'm not sure of my responsibility, and I know you all have to leave. Um, but someone yes, dropped you. this off to me to, um, last thank week, you. and it's an application for variance. Um, and oh, okay. you know, so I, maybe to the access board. Yeah. Uh, what is? Uh, uh, and what, so, some some store or <coughs> office or something is asking for a variance to comply. With the the access regulation, it's um, let me see a variance application for yup coffee roasters. Oh, okay. coffee roasters. Yeah. Um, I have a question. So they'll be going to zoning. 
Um, they, they are, they are they going to the access. Yeah, they, they actually have dropped this off at a number of places. And this is their requirement to drop it off at this exactly. commission. Yeah. So I don't know if this is something that maybe you all could yes. look at that really know the compliance regulations. Just to make sure. sure. Well, yeah. once they've made an application to the MAAD, then we're notified. Okay. Yes. Right. So. Yes. Okay. I, if it's in our community, we might, we're notified. And plus, Louie at the building inspector works under ADA. He's excellent with that. Okay. And he'll go and talk with the owners and so forth. And While we're doing this, I might as well just mention it was obviously at a time in its history a little too controversial to, in my mind, I'll raise the issue a lot, but that a former pornography shop uh -huh. um, has oh, a yeah. non-accessible entrance and, and uh, um, before a new um, leaseor uh, takes that on, um, we should uh, contact the building inspector and see whether it needs to go directly to the ADA or whether uh, the building department can intervene. If you want to give me more details, I can call in on that. Yes. Okay. Anybody Would interested in the loan? Modification. Very good. Have to just have a great. Um, when is our next meeting? Um, the next meeting is May. It should be on the agenda. Um, the next meeting is May 16th at 4 o'clock. Okay, thank you. Right. Have so, a good day, yeah. you guys. You too. I got to make a motion to return. Second. Second. Oh. The meeting. The meeting.